Hi, in this movie, I'm going to show you how you can import bills into QuickBooks Online using Z-Axis. So before we get started, let's describe what a bill is in QuickBooks Online. So a bill is used to track purchases of goods or services from vendors to be used in the company. So I've opened a bill in QuickBooks Online so that we can get an idea of what information is contained on those. In this particular bill, we have um, what we call splits going out to either expense type purchases. So here we have an insurance charge, which is an expense type purchase. You notice that here. And then there are items that we're purchasing on this bill as well. So we have some paint and some paint brushes. Now these are from the product and services list in QuickBooks. So these are particular items that we can purchase. Now this concept is important when we come to do the mappings when we bring this data into QuickBooks Online using Z-Axis. So what I'm going to show you now is how you can take data held in a text, Excel or IIF file of bill transactions and upload those in batch into QuickBooks Online using Z-Axis. So the first step is to run Z-Axis on our desktop and connect to our QuickBooks Online company file. So we copy the tokens that are created during the connection process and click Save. Next, click on the Import tab and we're going to browse to the file that contains the bills that we're going to upload into QuickBooks Online. So in this example, I have created um, some bills previously in a text file. And we're going to use those when we upload into QuickBooks Online. So what you'll first notice is that this file that we've created is displayed in this grid. It has a column along the top which contains a description of what's in each column and then repeating rows underneath of the bill data. Now, in this example, we've used items that are purchased as well as a combination of expense, expense account type purchases as well. So we can demonstrate how you can split those into the relevant sections on the bill. So next step in the process is to create a mapping. So you go up here and we select add new mapping choose the transaction type as bill and you'll notice here there's a column that contains all the fields that are on a bill in QuickBooks Online and this column which contains the description of each of the columns in our import file that we're going to match with QuickBooks Online. So we know that document number goes with its document number and we're going to put the date against the date and we'll continue mapping down this process here. The fields marked in yellow are the mandatory fields and the minimum fields that we need to map into successfully create a bill in QuickBooks Online. So now you'll notice we've mapped the account fields. We've also mapped the item fields. So we can add some expense account splits and some item splits. Now obviously if you're only purchasing items you would just do the item fields and equally, if you are just purchasing expense types, then you would just map the expense fields. But we're going to do a combination of those two here. So when we finished mapping, we'll give the mapping a name and we'll save it so we can reuse it on subsequent imports. Um, we also have a, a, a link here if you need help with any of these fields. If you click on that, it will take you an article on our website which describes the steps that you go through where the fields appear, as well as the detailed descriptions of each of the fields and what is expected in QuickBooks. So that's an important resource that you can use when importing. So we'll give the mapping a name and we'll click Save. So once the mapping has been applied, you'll see just the columns that we have mapped and the values that are corresponding to those. So we don't need to map all the fields on a on a import. We just need to select the ones that we know we're going to use in QuickBooks Online. 
So you can get a preview of the data and you can even amend this or edit it before it gets imported as well. Within Axis, we also have some advanced features to importing, whether we want to use the sequential numbering in QuickBooks, so we use an auto numbering, um, we can skip addresses and we can update vendor details if we need to. Equally, we have the option to um, skip if the bill already exists, or we can modify it, append to it, or create another one. So when you're ready to import, we'll click on the import button. Axis will validate the data before importing to make sure everything, sure everything is in the correct format. We'll then go through the process of updating the lists to make sure vendors are there and expense accounts and items. And then we'll begin the process of directly importing those bills into QuickBooks Online. If you do get an error message, we'll get a status and you should get a message in this box here, which will allow you to troubleshoot that. So now the import is complete. You have the option here to view to see what has been imported. So we'll click on that and we'll take a look at one of these bills that we just brought in. So here's a copy of the first bill that we brought in. Um, and you can see here, we've added a category here for the expense and then the item detail of that below. So it's allowed to import a bill with both the expense category and the items on it as well. So you also have the ability to undo any of the imports. So you can remove um, or roll back individually on these bills, as well as the option to undo all. So we can remove all the bills that we just imported if they're not the way that we want them to appear. So when we've finished, we just need to click on the close button and that's completed batch import of bills from a text Excel or IIF file directly into QuickBooks Online using Z-axis.